This is our new author named Gail Gibbons. She was born in 1944, so that makes her 76 years old. When she was in school, she drew all the time and liked to draw about the things she wanted to learn about. When she was an adult, she worked for a lot of TV shows. Then she wrote her first book. What is different about the books that she writes is that they're nonfiction books. What is a nonfiction book? A nonfiction book is a book filled with information and real life stories. Nonfiction books can teach you a lot of facts or tell you what happens in real life. I'm going to show you some examples of nonfiction books. So I grabbed some books from my bookshelf and here are some that I found. So this book is all about spiders. This one is about sharks. This one is about emperor penguins. And this one is about plants. Now, unfortunately, the only books I have in my house are all about plants or animals, but there are a ton of other types of nonfiction books out there. There are books about people from the past. There are books that explain how rocket ships work. Um, there are even books about how Legos were made. If you look at this book, you can see that it's just like any regular book. It has a front cover, a back cover, a title. There are pictures inside and there's a spine of the book, but what's different is what is inside the book. A lot of times when you open up the book, there's a title page, but then in nonfiction books, there's something called a table of contents. Um, this happens in a lot of nonfiction books. This shows you what um, subjects are on what pages. So yes, this whole book is about plants, but let's say you want to learn more about trees. That is a type of plant. If you look, trees is on page 22. So if you don't want to read anything else and you just want to read about trees, go to page 22 and there it is. Let's check out the table of contents for another book. Here's our shark book. So let's see if there's a table of contents in here. Open up the front cover. Here's a title page and oh, it gets right into it. There is no table of contents in this book. When I open up the penguin book, there's this um, really cool CD here, but there's also a title page. And there we go. Here is the table of contents. So you can learn about um, what happens in May on page six. You can learn about what happens in September on page 16. How about in December? You can find out what penguins do in December on page 22. This book, which I thought was just about spiders because it says spiders spin webs, is about other things. I didn't keep reading. It says, and other questions about creepy crawlies. So if you open up the front cover, blank here, let's see, title page, and then a huge table of contents. So let's look and see. Page 12, it says, why do caterpillars change into butterflies? Hmm. Page 20, why do bees dance? This is interesting. Page 28, can spiders kill people? So this is a very full table of contents. So if you want to skip to one of those parts, you just find out what page it's on and then go to that page. Another thing nonfiction books might have is at the end of the book, sometimes there's something called an index or sometimes it's a space where they just put some information or different facts. In the back of this book, yes, there's this section here about other books in that series, but there's also this thing called the index and it has words and it tells you where those words are on what pages. So it's kind of like the table of contents, but it's just for a word. Like, let's say you want to look at the word head. Head is going to be on more than one page. It's on page six, it's on page seven, and on page 28. So you will probably learn about different insect heads on those pages. Now, if this is a book about insects, I wonder if there's something that a lot of insects have. A lot of insects have heads, right? And yeah, heads was on three different pages. Insects have wings. A lot of insects have wings. So let's look and see if the word wings is in this index. W wings, it's under the letter W, w w w w wings. Wow, the word wings is on all of these different pages. You see that? Page five, six, seven, 13, 16, 17, 18, 19, 24, and 26. While I was reading the table of contents in this book, I noticed it, there was a section that says, which ants live in a tent? And so I wanted to go to that section and read about it because I was very curious. It said that section was on page 22. So I found page 22 and here it is. There's that question, which ants live in a tent? And isn't that a silly picture? That's just imagination. But I'm gonna read the section to you. It says, weaver ants sew leaves together to make tents for themselves and they use their larvae as needles and thread. Each ant holds a young grub in its mouth and pokes it through the edge of two leaves. The grub makes a sticky, silky thread, which stitches the two leaves tightly together. Did you catch all of that? 
So here's a drawing of what happens. These ants use their babies, their larvae, kind of like eggs, and they're poking, and they poke them through, and they use, it's like a needle and thread. That is pretty amazing. I wonder if there's a video on that. This is a video of an aquarium filled with weaver ants, and here they are trying to make a house or a nest. You see some really super strong ants holding the leaves together, while the other ants take the baby larva and use it for their silk, to kind of use it like a needle and thread. So there you go. Pretty amazing, isn't it? The things we can learn from books. All right, so there isn't enough time for us to read a book by Gail Gibbons today, but that's okay because I wanted to talk about what the differences are between a fiction, which is a pretend story made up, maybe um, invented fantasy, or nonfiction, which is what we talked about today, real information, something that teaches you or tells you about something that really happened. So next time we read, we're gonna read a book about ladybugs by Gail Gibbons. Thank you for learning with me and I'll see you next time, bye.